a DEFCON 1 situation. Yesterday was May 1st. It was not just May Day. It was rent day for a lot of people in the country. Right. We're having this whole conversation about who is being valued in this moment when we have this pandemic crisis and who is not. Renters are in trouble. Renters are suffering. Um, talk about uh, the, the ideas that you have for trying to alleviate that. Sure. Well, first, I just want to uh, commend my uh, my colleague, Representative Omar, for her legislation, which I'm proud to be an original co-sponsor of, uh, which would cancel rent. Um, you know, we're in the midst of a pandemic, a public health crisis. People are quite literally navigating a new normal, just trying to stay alive. And your housing is your most expensive bill. And also to the points made by Secretary uh, Castro and also the professor, um, housing is, is a critical determinant of health as well. So many of the health disparities that we see. It's also why we need quality, safe, and affordable housing. But housing is your most expensive bill. And so while folks are navigating a new normal, just trying to stay alive, they shouldn't also be worried about paying the rent. And so we should just cancel that and eliminate that worry. And, and, Congress and pause you know, mortgages as well. When they... Oh, absolutely. But the, when, when they hear that, then, then you think $1,200. That, that won't pay the rent in anywhere in New York City. I can tell you that. Even in no, nowhere in New York City is that paying your rent. Um, in most yes. big cities, that's not paying your rent. I'm sure in Boston, that's not paying your rent. So, yeah. you know, the challenge I think I mean, a lot of people have is they're watching, they're watching the legislation happen. They're like, this isn't helping me, right? So what, yeah. what, what, what can be done to, to, to change that dynamic? Yeah, Joy, let me just say, you know, what happened yesterday, so we're experiencing unprecedented hurt. And in the wake of that, we're also seeing unprecedented activism. But folks should not have to organize and, and mobilize around what should be so obvious. This hurt is unprecedented. The relief should be felt by everyone. It requires unprecedented solutions, unprecedented leadership. And we need a relief package that puts the people first. And that does mean many other things, uh, which I hope to enumerate later, but it certainly means canceling rent. And, um, you know, I think the reason this administration has such contempt for workers and for, um, you know, everyday families is they're callous and they're disconnected. Secretary Mnuchin thinks that someone, some family can live off of $1,200 for 10 weeks. That is $17 a day. And I think Donald Trump has contempt for workers because he doesn't know anything about doing work. All he does is play golf. So, of course, he has contempt for workers. But even when he plays golf, he's utilizing low income, oftentimes undocumented workers to make sure they're cleaning up after him and serving his food and, you know, making sure the green is, is long. So, so it's like he, sure. he knows what workers yeah. look like. They look like black and brown people. <laughs> yeah, well, work, that's right. And work gets done by workers. And while many people are just now getting the memo that these are essential workers, um, they have for too long been treated as if they are not essential, but that they are disposable. And so they don't have essential rights. Think about if we already had universal paid leave, universal health care, how we would have more effectively and better weathered this storm. And so this is why um, I partnered with Senator Warren and Representative um, uh, Kana to introduce the Essential Workers Bill of Rights. These workers deserve uh, personal protection, uh, protective equipment. They deserve hazard pay. They deserve to know when another co-worker has tested positive. And they deserve paid leave. And just to center this, you know, a constituent called me at 11 o'clock at night, an essential worker, a single mom. The schools are closed. No one else to care for her child. She said, I feel sick. Um, and I need to stay home with my child. Can you promise me, Representative Presley, that um, if I stay home, that I won't lose my job? And I could not guarantee her that. And so this, um, this bill would take care of that, and it needs to be included in the next relief package, along with um, the cancellation of rent. Yeah, and you know, on the rent cancellation thing, I want to stay with that for just a moment. Um, Secretary Castro, uh, not only were you HUD secretary, you also were a uh, mayor, big city mayor. Um, and, and so I wonder if... The, on the rent cancellation front, um, I imagine it will be very difficult to get a bill like that through Mitch McConnell, the Grim Reaper. But governors can make a lot of decisions, and in a lot of cases, they're acting as sort of mini presidents here because Donald Trump is not acting. Could a governor, um, in theory, implement rent cancellation in their state? Could Governor Cuomo, when he's cut, when he comes up in his press conference, announce that he is going to issue a rent cancellation, not just for individuals, but also for small businesses who, by the way, have to also pay rent. 
It's a great point. I mean, governors do have a lot of a lot of authority out there. And fortunately, as we've seen during this crisis, you know, governors have picked up the slack. So have mayors in, in cities across this country. Uh, in fact, in a lot of places, local communities, they've instituted protections against eviction. Uh, they have also started direct rental assistance funds. Uh, but to answer your question, you know, I do think that a balanced package that uh, provides rental relief is urgently needed. And in Representative Omar's uh, legislation, for instance, both sides of this are addressed, right? We need to address right. the side of the renter who's panicking right now because it's already the second of the month and usually on the fourth or the fifth that rent is delinquent and a landlord uh, can take action. And at the same time, uh, with respect to landlords, and the bill addresses this as well, a lot of these landlords are not landlords that own 25,000 properties. They're people that own a duplex or a fourplex. And people have brought up, which is a legitimate point, that many of them have a mortgage on that property. And so uh, that legislation is thoughtful in beginning to address all sides of that equation, but to make sure that all of those vulnerable American families that are panicking because they don't have the money for rent are taken care of. That's what we need to do. And, and I, fact, I would just know, build. There has to be a whole list. Know. Oh, go on. Mm -hmm. Go on. Oh, I just wanted to build upon that and say, yes, um, this legislation is very thoughtful. It's holistic because it acknowledges that, again, the scale and scope of this pandemic, the hurt is unprecedented, and the relief must be felt equitably. Yeah. And by the way, banks were handed sight unseen 1.7 trillion with a T dollars by the Federal Reserve. So the money is there. The, 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 the trick of we don't have the money, that won't work on Americans anymore because now we know they have a lot of money when they want to have a lot of money and banks sure do get it. So they could, um, you know, mitigate loans or they could just let people go on mortgages so that way that people can not charge rent because the mortgages, there can be mortgage relief. There's plenty of money. That's, that's right. Um, Seth, <laughs> and, and go on. Oh, I also just wanted to say to your point about um, uh, our state legislatures and our, our governors, I do have to give it up to, you know, my own Commonwealth of Massachusetts, where our state legislature has stepped up and there is at least a moratorium on evictions and foreclosures. But in order for us to really get at this um, uh, holistically, we do need to cancel rent and pause mortgages. And that's why I'm proud to be an original co-sponsor of Representative Omar's legislation. Yeah, and let me just keep say an eye on and that. And we hope that. Yes, please. I was just going to say, Joy, you know, my hope is that that we're going to re learn a powerful lesson from this experience and that we're going to begin to treat housing as a human right in this country, that this kind of movement will be, will be the beginning of longer lasting change and that we won't treat housing uh, as a back burner issue in the way that we have for a long time. Yeah, indeed. I so appreciate and, you know, that point. This begins yeah. with... No, absolutely. And, you know, I want to get, bring Seth and Brittany back in in the sense that so, Seth, it, it, it's a holistic thing, I think, as the congressman, uh, the congresswoman and the um, uh, former secretary have said. It's holistic. It's can you pay? Do you have any money? Do you have any income? It's can you then turn around and pay your bills and pay your rent? It's all it all sort of goes together. And at the job end of it, it's very difficult to get around the the, the, the sort of simple idea that if the United States was doing what some European countries were doing and simply providing enough of a monthly income, I think Senator Sanders has been for this, that's not at $1,200 one time, that's money per month. Is that something that the United States could theoretically be doing that would change a lot of these dynamics? Oh, there's no question about it. And I think we're going to have to do that because that $1,200, which, by the way, has only gotten out to about half of the American people, people who are going to get paper checks, in large part, haven't received that money yet. So that's really just a hope at this point for them. But yes, we're going to have to do that again because this economic recession that we're in, heading towards a depression, is going to last. And $1,200 doesn't just run out quickly in New York and Boston. It also runs out quickly in Omaha, and it runs out quickly in Butte, Montana. It's, yeah. it's not enough money to support a family for more than a short period of time. 
and unemployment right. insurance and benefits are not getting out to everybody who should be getting them either. That's the other big economic support that folks have. And we know that small Absolutely. businesses are laying off and large businesses are laying workers off in, in large numbers. So we're going to have yep. to figure out a way for the government to cover the difference because you can't pay bills with money you don't have. So exactly. we're going to have to feed money into the workers who are unemployed, workers who are in trouble, workers who are low wage already and we're struggling so that we can stay yep. out of the deep economic depression to which we're headed right now. Absolutely. We have an FDR problem without an FDR. I'm going to give Brittany the last word since we did start this uh, whole thing with a tweet that she posted that uh, uh, inspired me to have her on the show today. So I'm going to give you the last word, Brittany. It's absolutely true that we need a universal basic income in this country. The right is resisting this because they are worried that the left is going to get all of our the things that we've been pressing for uh, in this crisis. But look, crises expose the places that we need to go and the ways that we need to grow. We have an opportunity in this moment to get better, and we'll do that by focusing on how the least of these in our country are faring. Those folks are disproportionately black and brown. This housing crisis is driven by this terrible perception of black women as the undeserving and lazy poor. Yeah, and that, right. that, is, that is driving so much of this. So these policies will get us there, but we've got to go farther. I hope that we can start, but we've got to start by deciding that living and our government doing things to promote the living and thriving of all of our citizens and not just the chosen few is the way to the future that we want. Amen. Well, I think this panel, this is, this is sort of on the fly, so thank you all for being so flexible <laughs> and sort of we mushed two panels together. You guys are great. Brittany Cooper, Seth Harris, Congresswoman Ayanna Presley, Julian Castro, could not have been a, a better panel. Thank you all. Stay safe, please. Uh, we are still waiting on this press briefing from New York Governor Andrew Cuomo this morning. Uh, but